Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool jukebox repair video for you this evening. This is a Rock All of 490 that we have been working on. If you haven't seen our previous video where we messed with the power supply, go check that out. If you've got a Rock All of 490, you may be interested in that. Uh, also may be interesting to you if you have any of them near there. So like a 488 or a Rock All of 484, Rock All of 480, they're very similar. Rock All of 494. Uh, but this 490, we found out in the previous video, wow, look at, look at how bright we are. Uh, we found out in the previous video that the power supply was fine. We rebuilt it anyway. Um, but the, this CPU, System 2 control unit, uh, this control unit on the 490 had a short on it. So the short was making a couple of the voltages turn off on the power supply if this was plugged in. And then at the very end of the video, we figured out that there were two tantalum capacitors on the on one of the boards that are shorted, but we haven't fixed that yet. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this video just on the Rockola 490 System 2 control unit, so you can see what they look like, how they work. Uh, to, I don't I'm not an expert on them, but I can show you what I know, and we can go through one and see if we can fix this one, and maybe it'll help you fix yours. Um, these are pretty. A lot of the 490s, the problem is in this unit. So um, we can look at a couple things and see if we can get this one to work, hopefully. So if you have a 490 that's giving you trouble, this might be where you need to look. But I would watch the first video that we did on this first. We've also done some uh, Rockola videos in the past. You can go check out. They're here on our channel. Uh, that might help you get it, um, get it going. Also, I want to plug... I want to I want to do a plug for there is a forum on the internet that's free. They're not paying me anything. They don't know me. Uh, that's called Jukebox Addicts. Now I have a I have a strong Southern accent, so it's A D D I C T S. Jukebox Addicts, like uh, uh, you're addicted to drugs. <laughs> Juke, jukebox Addicts. If you will Google that, you will find a forum that. Uh, um, talks all about jukeboxes. If you post on that forum, they will help you fix your jukebox um, if you're willing to do a little work and work on it yourself. There are some good people over there. So you might want to go check that out. But we're going to get into this. So I took this out of this out of the box. You know, there, it hangs on a couple screws here and it has some connectors that come off the top. Um, we had determined by looking on the back that a few of the rails are shorted. I'll show you that again here in a minute. Uh, there are some little wing nuts that go on the front of this sucker, and you can take this little plate off the front. Um, and when you do, you will be down inside it. Now, some of these boards will have red buttons all the way on them. That's a slightly different version. You will also have some of these that this is different. This connector will be different, and these two connectors will not even be there. Um, so they're just from for different models. The 490 had the Rockola 490, the original one, which is what this is out of, and then it had a Rockola 490-1, not a 491, a 490-1, the first revision, and then had, there was a Rockola 490-2. They're all very similar. It's the Super Sound and the Super Sound 2 uh, Rockola jukeboxes. But they, they all have a similar um, control unit in it, but they are a little bit different. I don't know if you can always swap them, because one of the differences is this connector here. On some of them, it has a, uh, a ribbon cable here, and on some of them, it has more of a wired cable here. So the display up in the top of the box on the Super Sound and the Super Sound 2, the 490, the 490-1, the 490-2, sometimes the display is different. Sometimes the power supply is different. There's just a bunch of variations of this. Every part that you see in the in the machine will will be marked, though. They were great about marking them. So this one is the 54405-A control unit. So you will, you will see a number on everything that you've got. So whenever you're looking in the schematics and things like that... Um, you'll see that there are different parts for things, but they will all be properly marked. So if you're working on, like we're working on this, if I find the schematics and they're labeled as that, then I know I got the right schematics. And that sounds like it's real simple and of course, but um, it's a big problem on these particular ones because you say I've got a Rockola 490 and they, are, they, are, they have completely different parts in them, 
depending on which revision of it it is. Uh, but these are all, they're, they're fairly similar. Um, I've got some partial schematics that we may be able to use to fix it, but one of the, one of the good things you'll notice about them is that every chip is socketed. So if you do figure out that you have a bad chip, it's going to be really easy to change it because they put sockets on everything. That also means, though, that some of the chips, depending on how they were made, have tons of uh, oxidation on them. Look at that. See all the tarnish or whatever on the, on the legs? So that could be a problem that's keeping things from running right. So you might have to remove the chips and clean those legs. Um, and it just depends on how they were created. I think if they have silver, a silver coating, they look like that. If they have a tin coating, they look more like this, but I may have that backwards or something. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this back plate off. There are screws here and nuts here that hold everything together. So we're going to start taking it all apart and see if we can get it out of there. Um, these back six hold this plate. They may help me get it apart too. So I'll start taking screws off and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, so I took the six screws off the back of that plate and uh, it made it where the both boards were able to pop up and out of it. Uh, so this is the back board that we haven't looked at yet. Uh, you can see one socket is unpopulated on this revision for whatever reason. Here's another one, nothing in it. So what we figured out on this one was when we had this plugged in, the power supply, two of the voltages, there are four little LEDs on the power supply that indicate that the voltages are on. Two of the voltages would drop out if this board was plugged in. And what we eventually figured out was that by looking at the schematics, this C203 and this C204 down in here, these are tantalum caps and they are known whenever they get old for shorting. I'm not saying these two caps are, I'm saying any tantalum cap, whenever it gets old, one of the ways that they fail is they short together. So these are tantalums. This is a tantalum. It's the ones that look like big uh, gumdrops or something. That's a tantalum, that's a tantalum, that's a tantalum. Um, and that's about it. So these ones here are more like a, like a, a film capacitor. They're not prone to short. This is a tantalum. Um, this is a tantalum. This is an electrolytic. They usually don't short whenever they go bad. Usually they uh, open up. But electrolytics, they, they have like a paste inside of them that they, they dries out after a while. So they should be changed too if they're really old. So ours, basically this board is not doing its thing and it's shorting out the power supply. So it needs extensive work, okay? But here's what you're going to run into on these. There is a damn battery on the back side of this. The battery of doom. This one looks clean. Uh, many, many times, if you have a problem with this, your problem is going to be that battery has leaked alkaline all over the board and you have major damage on the traces on your board. So you may run into that. It looks like I'm going to get lucky on this one. So we're going to take that off and replace it with something else. But uh, look there for sure if you're messing with one of these. You notice on the front too that there's a spot here for another prom that's not populated. Then there's an empty socket there too. So they would design these boards to where they could do plenty of things. And then for a certain revision, they may not need all of that. Or they might change it later or whatever. So... Um, and just for, for, uh, completion's sake, this is 54386-1, it's the S2 memory, it says, and then on this side, it says, S2 CPU 54370-1A, so, that's what we're working with. So the first thing I want to do is mess with these two capacitors that I know are shorted. And while I'm replacing them, I'm going to replace the other ones too, if I have them at least. Uh, so I'm going to con continue taking it apart until I can get this whole board off. Uh, which there's just some more screws here. There's some posts. And then there's this big ribbon cable on the end. So we're going to get it down to just this board and then start working through it.
All right, I got it apart. I'm going to show you something cool. So somebody anonymously out there, I don't even know who, sent me a present. <laughs> they sent me a present off of Amazon. And so when we got it in, look what they have sent me. So I always do videos where I'm like, I hate the tripod. We're, we're probably going to set it up here in a minute, but I hate using the tripod because I like being able to say, look at this part, look at this part. Tripod, you can't do any of that. On a tripod, I'm trying to go like this. Can you see that? Can you, can, can you see that? You know, I just don't like it. You have to have one for certain things, but for stuff like this, screw that. And I know you could mount one like this. I'm not doing it, people. I'm not doing it. I like being able to move. So, so I'm usually trying to make everything work with one hand while I'm holding the camera in the other hand. And people have told me, oh, you could mount it on your forehead. Well, I guess I could if I wanted to look like a goober. But anyway, somebody out there, look at this. They have sent me a brand new, now there's no note in the bag or anything, so I don't know who it is. I got a couple ideas of who it might be. But they have sent me a test lead kit. Now, I believe what this is, it'll be leads that I can hook on stuff. Right? <laughs> and when you know it, I just so happen to need that right now. So let's see what else is in here. Got that. Oh, look at that. Wow. It's a chopstick lead. You can squeeze it together. I guess if it touches, that'd be bad. Well, I guess it depends on what you're checking. These are just the normal ones. That's very cool. Very, very cool. And then here's some other attachments. Wow. All right. So whoever sent me these, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I will put them to good use. We actually need those all the time. Now, I can't, I can't promise that I will always use the appropriate lead, even though I now own them. <laughs> But it'll probably help me a lot. So like the ones with the little the little grabbing thing, I'll probably use them a lot. And I'm going to use them right now, actually, so or try to. So, uh, yeah, let me set all that up, and I'll show you what our problem ended up being on this board. It's on that one, actually, that, uh, that we found in the last video. Okay, I got me all rigged up here, people. So here's the deal. So this is, so if this is plugged in, uh, it's shorted. You got problems. It turns off the power supply. This is the power connector right here. And if you look very closely, you know, a lot of times you can tell the power rails by how thick they are. You know, like, so these little thin rails usually are like signals or something. Not always. But um, come to find out, this trail here, this track here, and this track here, this one's ground, and this one and this one. I wish I had a... I'll use one of these probes, one of these other probes. This is the ground trail trace connector. This is like negative 28, and this is plus 25, which are the ones that are shorting. Well, if you look, this one capacitor that's a tantalum is across ground and one of these. And with my cool little clip probes on it, it is a dead freaking short. And then the same with this one. This one is, is, is across the ground and one of the other um, traces. So if you look on the back, you see that once they come down off this connector, they go to these big traces that run across the board to power rails. So you've got a direct short from the power rail to the ground. And these two tantalum capacitors go across those two. So my guess is, although I may be wrong, but my guess is those capacitors are shorted. I'm testing them in board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them off the board and then see if it's if the traces are still shorted. And then we can also test the, the capacitor off the board. So I'll do that and uh, we'll check it out. All right, so we pulled it out. Look at that. It even fixed my damn meter. That was off point two. All right, so at least that capacitor is shorted. So I'll test the traces now too, you know, to see if this and the one that it's connected to is still shorted. If it's not, uh, that was the only thing shorted. But, 
just as a preventative thing, I'm going to go around the board and find every tantalum cap and replace them because we're already getting them failing on this board. So uh, it's just a matter of time before the other ones do too. Um, so let me go through that a little bit. Oh, I have to replace the capacitor too, of course. The value of it is a little weird to understand. It's blue, black, and brown, which I don't know how to really uh, read that on these capacitors. They're not marked. It does have the positive end marked. So I'm going to look on the schematics again and see what it tells us the, the value is. But So we can swap them. A lot of the other ones, it has it actually printed on the, on the capacitor. But uh, we're getting there. All right. So I have changed out the tantalums on this one. And uh, my three traces are no longer shorted. So I believe if I put it back in right now, it would... Uh, not turn the power supply off. But it may not work, but it wouldn't turn the power supply off. So now I'm going to go through and uh, I'm not going to clean all of the chips just because there's so many of them, but I'm going to pull out any of the ones that look like they have got any kind of um, oxidation. Somebody was getting on me earlier because I pronounced it wrong. <sighs> Get over it, people. Any oxidation, oxidization, on the uh, on the pins, if it looks bad, I'll clean that particular one. But most of them look pretty pretty shiny, so I don't think I got to do all of them. But then uh, that's it for this board. There's not really anything else on there. Now this one over here has similar issues going on, so we'll mess with it next. So this is the second board, the memory board, and uh, another tantalum. I guess I should mention I'm replacing them with electrolytics. From what I understand, the tantalums are are uh, more uh, precise, but the uh, on an older setup, usually you don't necessarily have to replace them with a tantalum. So I'm using electrolytics, and we'll see what happens. Um, and there are other electrolytics here I'm also going to replace while I'm at it. Uh, and then, same thing, I'm going to clean some of the chips, and I'm going to replace this battery with a button battery. We're going to see if we can figure out if that's the original one or if it's been replaced already once before or what the deal is. Right, so I'll, I'll start on the caps and then I'll clean the chips and then we'll do a little thing on the battery. Okay folks, so I have pulled the battery off and it isn't really corroded but there's no date on it either. It's been corroded and look, see the See that? That's where they've been cleaning this with sandpaper, probably the first time they did it. And the corrosion has came back a little bit, or they never got it all the way off. So I'm going to clean this up better, take this off, and get it nice and shiny again, and then neutralize it with a little bit of vinegar, and then uh, clean it up a little bit. But um, usually, this is very minor. Usually it's like way over into here, causing you problems on the other chips around it. So... Um, We'll clean that up, and then I'm going to put a little button battery on it. Okay, so I've cleaned up the edge connector for the ribbon cable. Uh, there was, a like, the EEPROM. The, it looked like it had some uh, dirty legs. Clean them. And then what I've decided to do, I've seen people, uh, and I've done it before, where you put, like, a triple battery holder and, and things on it. This battery that was on it, the board uh, recharges. So you need to put a diode between your battery and the positive. So what I've done is I took a little button mount and installed it in two of the holes that don't connect to anything and then connected the ground to ground and then used a, a um, diode to connect from the positive to the positive. So when the board's on, it's not charge, trying to charge the battery um, that isn't rechargeable. And plus, with that mount, that mounts in there like that, so it'll be easy for people to take that little cover off, which you can do in the machine, and swap the battery. So we'll see how that works. Definitely better than this. Okay, so I'm going to start putting it all back together, and then we'll test it and see if it works. I mean, it may not even, there may be problems with the, uh, with the logic on it, but... We'll put it all back together and see if we can get it back in the machine. Okay, so we got it back together. 
everything mounted how it should be. Very cool. We'll put the little cover back on it and then try it in the machine. It may or may not work. Um, but I uh, cleaned off chips, I replaced capacitors, I fixed a little battery damage, I put in a new battery. Now they will work without a battery. But uh, there you go. Alright, so let's try it back in the machine and see if we get anything. Okay folks, so we put it back in and I uh, took this bulb loose so that the brightness won't uh, make it where we can't see the LEDs on the on the um, control unit. So let's see if anything different happens. Okay, yeah, I like that. So it went to enable pricing or initializing lock on and then it jumped over there to normal operation. But I thought that at the beginning these um, would rotate around one time, maybe not on this one. Uh, my four lights are still on on my power supply. Everything's looking good, so maybe um, maybe we can add some credits. It's saying top selection 100. Let me see if I can put a credit on it. Sometimes you can just kind of finagle these a little bit and it'll add some credits. We got 11 credits. I do not have a record, but we're going to try one. So let's try 190. could tell that there was no record. Great. Smooth as silk. Wow. Wow. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get a record. All right, we're blinded by the light again, but here we go. I put one in 111. That's way too bright. I'm going to make it real dark just so that we can actually see it playing. If it's going to play. There we go. That's a little more like it. Now, I have no clue if the amp works. Anything like that. Oh, missed it. Might need to adjust that a little bit. Grabbed 101 instead of 111. Hmm. Might need a little adjustment on the Mac, but that would be for another video. I just want to make sure that the CPU is working. Uh, let's see if I tell it 121 if it'll grab it. This is our control unit video, people, not our mechanism adjustment video. That'll do it.
So I need to adjust the mech. We're off on that a little bit. But I think that has fixed our control unit. Very, very cool. So there you go. Now, like I was saying, if, if you get, uh, if yours isn't working right, definitely check those capacitors like we did. But um, that's not typical. Usually you're going to have tons of battery damage. You might have some other stuff going on too. But, but there you go. Hope that helps you a little bit. So, I guess we should see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like with the top down. Such a good looking box. These sound really good too. You can't really tell with that record. It's not really a uh, much of a much of a cooker. <laughs> but uh, such a good looking box. These are one of my favorites. So anyway, leave your comments below. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully that'll help you on your CPU so you at least know what you're looking at in there. And uh, make sure to leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. I'd love to see more people fix these uh, older jukeboxes because a lot of them are being very neglected, right? So it's easy to find one broke. So find one broke near you. You might track Craigslist. I don't know if you'll find one this nice. This thing is in good shape. Holy crap. Not, well, it's not perfect, but it's very nice. So leave your comments down below. You can see all the games that we have available for sale. If you're interested in buying one on our website, go to lionsarcade.com, and we, it's always up to date. Or you can come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. And we've got a building full of arcade games and pinball machines. It's just a few we're working on right there. Uh, so you can come by and see us. Now, if you can't come by and see us, that's fine. Just subscribe to us. Uh, we had a gentleman uh, from Wisconsin telling us earlier that uh, he watches our videos. Thank you, Wisconsin. We see you up there. <laughs> right? um, leave your comments uh, below and let us know where, you, where you're uh, watching from. We think that's pretty cool. And we'll try to give you a shout out um, if you remind us enough. And uh, down below, we'll have a link to uh, something on Amazon. Now, if you uh, follow that link to Amazon, anything you buy on Amazon doesn't cost you any extra. It doesn't raise your prices or anything, but it gives us a royalty for sending you to Amazon because Amazon considers that advertising and pays us as such. So it doesn't give you, it doesn't cost you money. It costs Amazon money, and that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Look at Matt laughing at me. <laughs> we see you out there, man. <laughs> but, uh, um, um, so go buy some stuff on Amazon using our link, and it'll give us, uh, <laughs> Amazon's money. So we appreciate it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for filming us working on this thing for you tonight. I've still got a little bit of stuff I got to do left to it. I got to check the light bulbs and stuff and I got to adjust the mech so that it grabs the right record. Um, may end up having to rebuild the amp or something like that. But that would be a separate video, folks. Uh, we just wanted to do one just about the control unit. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.